Hello, everyone. It's great to be here at Khan 2020, even if this is in a very different format to the way we usually do it. And Bani and many of the others who are on our panel often go to Khan. I've never had the privilege to go, so this is great. First session I'm actually attending at Khan, and it's virtual. That pretty much indicates and underlines the sweeping changes that we are seeing around the world as a result of the coronavirus epidemic. And many of these are changes that may well be long-term. They may well be long-lasting. They may well be a complete change in the way we're going to approach life forever, even after the pandemic. So today, we have an absolutely, have absolutely, absolutely stellar panel to tell us what the future of films is going to be post-COVID. And I just want to welcome all of our guests, and then we'll get them to take it forward. Mr. Atul Kumar Tiwari is with us. Uh, great to have you with us, uh, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Innovation and Broadcasting. Uh, T.C. Kalyani is also with us, who's Joint Secretary of Films and MD, and MD, uh, NFDC, also the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Uh, Marit Pari is with us, uh, member of CBFC. I don't know if it's easier or tougher running a sensor board remotely, <laughs> but uh, may well be, at least could be somewhat easier than actually doing films. So we've got some of the most reputed filmmakers we've got and uh, across a range, a range of genres. Shekhar Kapoor, it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us, uh, film director and producer, Kabir Khan. Uh, again, a pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Anand Rai, uh, with us as well. And we are going to be joined by Mark Paligno, producer from the UK, joining us in, in just a short period of time. So this is as far-packed a panel as you can get, <coughs> and it's, it's virtual, so things are changing. Um, Bani, how much of this is temporary? Uh, how much of this is permanent? I mean, the very fact that we can sit here and do this great panel at Cannes without anybody having to fly halfway across the world, without anyone having to spend money on plane tickets and hotel rooms and the rest of it, miss out some things which you would normally enjoy, uh, especially the French Riviera, um, but then have the ability for a lot more people to join in than would otherwise get the chance to join in. So this, in a sense, this entire session is underlining the sort of changes that we are seeing. It's very surreal, uh, Vikram, because uh, I could have never envisaged in my living years, I've been to Cannes several times, and it's not just the beauty of the French Rivera, it's the beauty of cinema, the craft that we all belong to, which plays out so beautifully at the festival. But I think also these are extraordinary times, Vikram. You know, when you look at the world around us in the past three months, what we all have gone through, almost initially looked like a dystopian film which is just refusing to end. We are all actors in it. Uh, you know, most actors and directors and writers at least know the beginning, middle and the end of these times. But this seems to be that kind of a story which is just playing out so long and so hard. But having said that, I wouldn't be very ominous about it. I would say that the digital space where we are meeting virtually today is the new normal. And when I say this is a new normal, it becomes very evident that life around us will be more uh, real in terms of the virtual. What does that mean? You and I are meeting here today with all our other friends who are logged in from various parts of the world in several cities. Similarly, the craft of filmmaking, and I would still say this is not post-COVID. We are actually in the middle of COVID. We really do not... Uh, know when this whole story is going to end or where it's when whenever it's uh, reaching its finale. But I think the new normal is stories which will now be told digitally, stories which will be virtual. Uh, of course, it will re require a tremendous amount of shift of mind space. As I've been saying for past few days, speaking elsewhere, we need to recalibrate ourselves and our energies and our resources. And I think that is the way forward. But Yet, one thing becomes very evident, we are a very flabby industry. We always require those many hundreds of people, despite the fact that jobs and employment in the industry is a very big question even today. We will have to go lean. We will have to look at technologies. And I think Shekhar forever has been speaking about artificial intelligence and its impact, how it is going to impact cinema and filmmaking. I think the new normal is going to be very virtual and we still have to do more skilling. I will again underline more skilling will be required to be able to, you know, understand this new normal. Right, Vani, I think that's, a, that's an interesting take. I, before I come to 
the, the, the representatives we have from the, from the MIB and the government, which I will do in a couple of minutes. We have three of the most prominent directors that India has seen. So I'm going to try and pick their brains. We heard what Vani said and, you know, to some extent, I think the, some of the changes we are seeing right now were always on the cards. Personally, Dojra, I quit television news four years ago to start building properties that would be designed for a digital future, which would not be in any way, uh, you know, uh, life was going to change, was always going to change dramatically. I think coronavirus has accelerated it. Um, Shekhar Kapoor, uh, as, as Vani was saying, you've been talking about some of this for a while, that things are going to change and things are going to change very fast. Had you ever anticipated it would happen this fast and look quite as dystopian as it's looking right now? Yes. Apart from uh, big, huge companies like Disney that make a lot of money on big theatrical releases, if you analyze them, the money is not made in big theatrical releases. The money is made from the spin-off of big theatrical releases in theme parks, in games. And if you look at the figures, you realize theatrical release is just a kind of initial boost to all the 360 degrees the storytelling does do. So yeah, I've anticipated it. I think theatrical is dead. Whatever we, we want to say, theatrical is dead. It will never go back to the way it is. You're never going to have now you know, imagine one of Kabir's films and he's sitting there, it's a really emotional scene, and one guy in the audience coughs. What's going to happen? Everybody's going to walk out. Everybody's just, you know, you, you lose it like that. I think we'll go back to theaters, but very specialized theaters. We'll go back to theaters. Possibly, I think, in the world, even the way we are doing OTT platforms are going to change because their technology, too, is outdated. Since... <laughs> Every technology, because I work at MIT also, every technology in the world, uh, technological company is trying to develop new ways of delivering what we call OTT. Very soon you'll find OTT delivered with virtual reality. You'll find it delivered in game playing. So game playing, as we know, game playing and OTT and video and game playing has to come together. I've not known why it hasn't come together, but what that this this will do, COVID will do is, because now the online is becoming, everybody's realized everybody's going online. It's happening and it works. So online technology is like, as I said, like game playing, like virtual reality, like AI will kick in and companies will come and present you, the audience, with so many choices that even on an OTT platform, you'll have multiple storytelling. Let me go back to how it used to be and how technology changes things. Before when Mahabharat was just a spoken idea, there could not have been one Mahabharat. There must have been a million Mahabharats because it was spoken by everybody and related differently and differently and differently. And then came the Gutenberg Press, a publishing idea, but it was a technology. So not but to publish, you had to have one story. In film, that translated to the three-act structure. In, uh, in uh, Mahabharata, try, uh, you know, okay, so-and-so's interpretation, so-and-so's interpretation, one interpretation. Now, with the technology we, we have, we can go back to multiple storytellings. So when Kabir makes a film, when Anand makes a film, he'll be thinking and saying, how about a film within a film within a film? How about a story within a story within a story within a story? So audiences can go into a story, create another world. Within that world, they can create another story and your online platforms will be able to give you that. Now, once viewers have that choice, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding confusing, but it is that technology we're heading to. Once the platforms give you that choice, you'll never go back to what it was. You never ever, because the generation that is coming up that would have occupied your theatrical will not exist wanting to go to the theater. They'll want to give, have their cell phones in the theater making choices. Now they can do it at home. So we're never going back to theatrical. But these are the choices. So it's going to accelerate this whole idea is going to accelerate. But then have we seen it before? Yeah. That's what Mahabharat was like. That's how we used to tell Mahabharat. You know, kahani, uske beech mein kahani, uske beech mein aur kahani, uske beech mein aur kahani, alag kahani, phir wo kahani. That's the technology that's coming. Oops, I just dropped something. That's a, that's a really interesting take, Shekhar, and I'm going to come back to this entire theme, and I, I really would like to finish around this. Part of, for example, what we've been trying to do is figure out where you are. You're, you're really talking about using 
advanced technologies which go beyond covid using ai having you know loops of personalization within a story and choice within a story does that work do people do it do they want to just have a lean back experience lots to discuss from what you've said and i'll come back to it but let me get the others in kabir shekhar said we're not going to go back to the theater in the manner that we once did now a lot of the films that you make and the sort of films that you make frankly they are the sort of films that you really do want to go to a theater for and get that entire experience and have that 360 degrees and have that surround sound it's not the sort of a movie that works sometimes best on a mobile phone or on a small screen or even on a computer screen so would you be concerned if people don't come back to the theater or would you just have to find a way to adapt or do you think eventually they will i mean at a certain point already you're having a situation with 4000 new cases a day in delhi people are on the streets and they're not looking particularly fast maybe what shaker is saying will will fade out within 6 months and somebody coughs you won't think about it yes yeah, so i i tend to agree with most of what shaker has said uh, but in the context of uh, the statement that the theaters are dead i don't think in uh, i i would agree with that maybe in the near future uh it is going to be a struggle to get uh, audiences back into the theaters but i would like to believe that you no know, theater is not dead because i'm just saying it simply from the fact that i've heard that you know from my growing up years and i'm somebody who grew up in the 70s and 80s i heard this first when the vcr came in i heard it when dvd came in i heard it when you know multiple television channels came in then i also heard it when the ott platforms came in but there's something very um I mean, uh, very romantic and appealing and enduring about going into a, a darkened hall with three, four hundred people and watching a film. As you said, it's a certain experience that unfortunately the OTT platforms cannot quite capture. Um, so, as a filmmaker, I would still like to believe that no uh, theaters will still be around and people will uh, want to go back uh, to the theaters. Of course, provided the fear goes goes away. As Shekhar is absolutely right, in the present circumstances. Somebody coughs. No matter how good the film is, you're going to get up and run, um, and you're not going to take your kids. You're not going to expose people from your family to such a situation. But I, I, I think I would like to believe that this shall pass. Um, it might take a year. It might take two years. But I think once the fear of this virus goes away, uh, I think people will go back to the theaters. I would like to believe they would, because you're right. There are certain films that we make that we would like people to. experience them on the theater see having said that that they going to experience it on, on theaters does not mean that they will not then experience it on ott platform that anyway they will because uh, you know in india uh, we still are going to access only 3 to 4% of our population via theaters the rest of the population is going to watch it on ott platforms and television channels so um So I think I'll, I'll remain an optimist and say you no know, theaters won't die and i'm sure in time people will come back and enjoy it All right, that's a that's an interesting thing, Adan. Before I get you in and then go to the go to the government as well, right. what Kabir? So two slightly different views on whether things are going to change. Now to take Kabir's point forward and to play a devil's advocate there, not for everyone, but there are a certain there will be a section of the audience which may say, well, we can solve for some of the problems that Kabir was just talking about again through the use of technology. I mean, like. it is almost inconceivable to me that you will not have a situation 8 to 10 years from now where a lot of people won't be experiencing you know content or movies or whatever virtual in virtual reality almost right but just putting on a headset which again makes it a personal experience you can be sitting inside your living room and put on a headset and get the full surround effect and get whatever it is and you are immersed in that 10 years from now almost almost certainly that will happen um, right. other things you know with better surround sound and surround speakers not today only a small section of people can afford it maybe you'll get headphones that enable that for more people what's your sense of it we've heard two different views on whether theater is going to eventually survive or not survive what do you think what do you think okay first of all for me you no know, vikram like uh, we are in this panel right now if it was not virtual i would have got a very warm hug from shekhar sir and kabir and uh, you know vani and i'm missing that so uh, can you understand the basic difference of uh, getting into this fight of that ott and digital and people will walk, go to cinema it's it's secondary for me right now what i'm missing is that that human thing you know i i feel uh, quite distant right now i feel that this should 
the reason we had cinemas in india and people used to go it was a community viewing and people are missing it so for me that that is not going anywhere once the covid thing is solved people are moving back to theaters that i am very sure of the thing i am worried about is the kind of films we make the kind of stories we we tell the kind of connect we have with the audience which is going to change you know the, the kind of stories we were taking to them will change so this covid thing will it is 3 months 6 months 9 months it will have an effect on us but uh, theaters are not going to die especially in, a, in 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 a country like india because this is the only thing we provide to our audience when they when a family moves out so i have a very strong feeling that today also when we are as as vani said we are in 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 the in the mid of covid still you find people moving around and we are trying to catch hold of them and put them back in the uh, in their homes and in their safety so when when we come back to this this ott and this, this fight of cinema was pre covid also so which which we are fighting anyways covid will change the kind of stories we are telling them so it is not about i am very sure that it will get resolved in a years time in nine months eight months what is going to change is the the way we used to tell our human stories that is going to change more than anything else that viewing will continue cinema will is here to stay if i could so, just vikram just, just taking from a point from anand i think that's a very important point see with despite all technology the one thing that we can never replace is the experience of community watching right now for me my next film that's awaiting a release i was supposed to release on the 10th of april which is on the story of the 1983 cricket world cup i hope to be able to have 3 to 400 people in the theater screaming and shouting like they are in a stadium i will never be able to capture that with individual sitting in in houses watching it as a filmmaker i want to be able to experience that as an audience i want to be able to experience that so i think that's a very important element of theaters that technology will never be able to replace um can i just come in vikram for a second yeah. sure look i came up on theaters i made huge films you know and even in the west i made elizabeth and four feathers i love having 600 horses and 5000 people fighting i mean i grew up with those films i myself were really upset that theaters going to go away but as i watched technology this thing that both you know anand and and sabir you both saying that's exactly what technology is trying to do is to give you a much deeper much more personal experience that what technology will do is put you in the, your story you know what i mean you're not sitting outside the story the whole technology is yes i understand the 400 people clapping and shouting and you are affected by it but what technology is replacing that with is the ability to you make a story and you make a world right uh, the cricket match what technology is doing is ability to have the viewer sitting in the match taking a position where am i sitting where am i going to sit in the match which side am i what do i want to see you're giving the viewer far more choices than a theater will and you will get addicted to that till addicted to get addicted to taking that choice now you give on one hand you're taking away the community experience yeah on the other hand you're giving a generation that is getting is growing up on game playing a generation that has already rejected our kind of cinema unless it's like unless it's going on a date and going to scream and shout like pop concert but that there is a generation that's coming up that will not accept singular storytelling right. they want to have choices in that storytelling and that choices is there already just look at the latest star wars release you know how people play game uh, of what star wars release and they make much of the kids addicted all over america just to the game playing of the characters in that star wars movie and this the movie was basically online yeah so all right when when just when i just to get mr tiwari sorry bari uh, can i just come back to you i mean i don't want to get mr yeah, tiwari sure. and hani in for a sure. second and we sure. there's a lot to talk about here mr tiwari let me just turn to you so we've heard a range of views expressed and we'll continue the debate which is the way you're looking at it but actually what i wanted to ask you was as i'm sure the entire industry is thinking and you must be concerned about for the film industry along with many other areas of the of the economy worrying about the 
post covid scenario is a secondary question to figuring out how are we going to survive the immediate crisis is, is that something which you think is increasingly under control now but the cinema halls are still closed at the end of the day and who knows when they're going to be reopened uh, what is your take on how on how long you think the disruption will continue and the plans that you have for ameliorating it uh, <clears throat> uh, Bikram, first of all i would like to consider myself honored uh, to hear Mr. Shekhar Kapoor, Mr. Kabir Khan, and Mr. Anand al Rai, all of very creative people whose movies I have grown up with. Uh, particularly, I'd like to remind uh, Mr. Kapoor that I was just uh, in my uh, phone, I was just going through the music of the Bandit Queen, and it was taking me a different world altogether. So, thank you, for all of you, for giving such excellent movies. Rajinki Bhaidan is also one of my favorite movies. So, first of all, my salute to the creative people. We are very prosaic people. We are business-like, but uh, uh, we are we are bothered about uh, two things at present. One is that uh, how to restart the art of movie making, content creation, uh, without uh, too much of social contact. And in that respect, uh, many state governments have brought out the SOPs, uh, and they are encouraging it. Also, we are also in the process, and we are just getting it vetted through the Health and Family Welfare Department and that will also be issued but at the end of the day SOPs don't matter the uh, the confidence that the filmmakers the producers and all the creative people who are around what how confident they are and the extra cost that it also implies on the filmmaking that is how they, everything will work out uh, i i'm i'm amazed i i i i agree with all of you in a sense that i agree with uh, mrs uh, vani Pripati that film is making a craft at the same time i also agree that some amount of crowd the reaction is also very important. At the same time, I also agree with Mr. Kapoor that things will get a story within story within story. And this is also interactive. And during the COVID days, for, and for, uh, fortunately, I got a lot of time to see the uh, content on the OTT platforms. And I would, I was, I, I, one thing I find certain is that we are getting deeper into Bareilly and San, or Jhansi or Kanpur, etc. At the same time, using more real, more more virtual, more technology, but still. Our emotions, our primary responses are dependent upon the something which is very, very personal, I say, at the, uh, uh, the lower level. So the grand storytelling is not there. So in that sense, uh, there's also a change in the way already happening in the way the contents are being created. Uh, from our side, we, 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 uh, we foresee that within uh, another next month, uh, the, we'll be able to have some kind of plateau on the COVID cases. And it will be time for us to resume the life as we have known. And uh, there will be certain changes, uh, indelible maybe, on the way the theaters will function, where the film shooting will take place. But uh, I assume that uh, maybe within a short uh, window, we'll be able to get back to normal, which, as Vani says, may not be a, a normal normal, it will be a new normal. And uh, we would try to uh, do whatever is possible to encourage. Uh, that the things get back to normal. I will stop at that and like to hear the other parties as well. All right, uh, Thirji, we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. Kiranji, before I come to you, Vani, you were saying something. And, and Vani, I also want to throw you a question. I'm seeing some of the questions that are coming in live. This could be an interesting question for you that linked to what Shekhar was saying, the minute you are saying instead of public exhibition, if a lot of content now becomes private in your room, in OTT, other things, it becomes more personalized. Do you still have the same role of a censorship framework? Because obviously what you're doing inside your house is very different to public. So is that going to be, is that going to become a question? So question and then whatever you wanted to say. No, so uh, in any case, uh, the Central Board of Film Certification, which you and I know also is called Censor Board, uh, the mandate under the Cinematograph Act of 1952 is only to certify films for theatrical releases. So our mandate is very clear. Whatever is public ex exhibition and is being released in the theatres is all that we can certify. There is as yet no mandate and Atulji and Kalyaniji are here uh, on uh, regulating OTT and in fact there is no mechanism as yet which looks at certifying or regulating. So if this is a new normal that films are not being released in the theatres and are going to OTT platforms, it will also probably require a certain, uh, as I said, the word recalibration of policy 
and that's the internal matter of the ministry how they will look at it and i'm sure they will look at opinion around them and you know how filmmakers and content creators and people who receive that content you know very often we forget there's an audience there we are there because there's an audience there are people who receive us who love us who uh, give us tremendous feedback on the stories that we tell i mean my my hat not just as a cbfc person also as an actor and a producer i always get feedback and that is what actually makes me or propels me to you know tell a story but coming to what i was trying to say before in just connecting the dots here between what kabir anand and shekhar said you know the distinction has to be made between which type of content is being consumed as private as personal which is in the palm i've been saying this for many years since i'm the junior most veteran on that board uh, that the content which is in your palm is personal it's private at the moment it's collective it's like a collaborative feeling 1000 people sitting inside the theater are experiencing something it's a dark hole somebody sitting next to me is a stranger but as uh, kabir said would be screaming and shouting as if you're inside a stadium and so on that distinction will come in will kick in even more now which means what i consume is content inside my study in my bedroom in my drawing room in my living room even if i have five members of the family sitting with me is one type of a ex expression one type of a reflection but what again plays out in the theater is that collective and i think that is where i don't see there is a black and a white here that this goes out and that comes in somewhere as shekhar is saying if it's a wheel within a wheel as we say within the empirical storytelling methods we are all a land of katha vachaks whether it's the ramayana or the mahabharat a story within a story will become a new normal we already have films where you don't have a singular monolith narrative you have films which have so many tremendous multi layered you know narratives playing out you already have that kind of cinema you see whatsapp messages on your screen as if a, a character is actually typing it and you actually see this is the new absolute new experience that you are facing similarly this i think we get more collaborative i don't see it as getting more combative we will be in denial if we will say this is going to combat the other there is no combativeness here it's also the time which is pushing us when we shifted from the spool to the chip it was a huge change but we are on the chip now and we don't make any we don't have any complaints about using the chip similarly i think i see further more shared collaboration emerging than any kind of conflictive combativeness i think it's more optimistic than being pessimistic and the beauty of cinema goes nowhere nobody can take that beauty and that glamour and that feel that you have to story tell right that's a that's a that's a really interesting take kalyani ji let me get you in now on on that front your sense on on where you think we're headed and i see mark joining us mark great Welcome onto the panel. My apologies for being late. No problem. Kalyan. Would you like to ask? Um, why, don't you, why don't you go first, Kalyani ji? Okay. Uh, two, three things. My take on uh, the post, the, the COVID situation and the post-COVID situation. COVID situation. Our um, media and entertainment industry has risen up to the occasion. They have actually given us. I mean, when we were posting messages, etc. given us so many uh, messages shooting from their homes etc so i think the time has come for innovation innovation and how we go about doing it i have a proposal with me in the ministry where uh, you know we uh, the brics countries they're looking for directors from the brics countries they will be shooting five films and then integrating it into one film so probably the new normal is actually going to you know change but we i mean the industry has always risen to the occasion there were single screens earlier now you have multiplexes and uh, recently on the theater ekal release mr kapoor uh, we had a uh, discussion with the uh, you know with the multiplex association of india and they are very keen they want to say that whatever restrictions whatever sops have to be put in place maybe we work at 50% capacity we will do it but we are willing to start it they just waiting for the go ahead like mr tiwari said we just waiting for the curve to kind of flatten 
before we can start uh, looking at the new normal. But the SOPs are being developed and we're just waiting for it to get uh, better by the health ministry so that we can be sure that it is uniformly done across the uh, um, you know states. Only today I just got a message from Mr. Kotakara saying that some uh, shooting started in uh, Andhra Pradesh and or Telangana. The TV shooting had started, but then one of the persons tested positive for COVID, and so the shooting had to be stopped. So we have to be careful in these in in the COVID situation. Post COVID, whatever is the new normal, whatever uh, is the thing, I'm sure the cost of production may increase, may not increase. Maybe <laughs> if the scale of production is reduced, the cost of production can be contained within the uh, you know within the kind of thing. Maybe if the shooting times are reduced. Uh, the cost of product. I mean, I'm not an expert in it, but uh, I'm sure, you know, there would be innovative ways of handling the same thing and shooting within the same time frame, etc. Um, our um, consumption as a India as a consumer of, uh, uh, of of films is that is not going to change in whatever mode we do. OTT um, last when we had a session with the OTT uh, players, we were looking at self certification. There is a lot of demand from the audience, from your audiences, because the genre of audiences is uh, varied on the OTT platform, that there has to be some kind of perhaps moderation in the views that are, uh, you know, that are being depicted in some of the serials. So uh, as the government, we will have to take in cognizance of all the uh, seg segments of the population and what uh, best. I'm not sure we want to come out with a policy, but if things continue in this way, we may or may not have to come out with a policy. Self-certification self, uh, will probably be, um, you know, required uh, or, you know, accepted if it can be uh, a solution for the issue. Um, aside from that, I, uh, it, is, it is an honor for me to be here. Uh, like you, Vikram, I have not been to Kant's. So for me, this is a new this thing. But just an aside, I don't know how many meetings would have taken place uh, physically in Cannes. As on date, uh, Fiki has told me that we have about 239 B2B meetings that have already taken place till now. And we're just into day three. There's still two more days to go, three more days to go, day two as far as Khan is concerned. So I'm sure this uh, new uh, mode of uh, virtual uh, you know, festivals can facilitate maybe our independent filmmakers to reach out to a wider global audience. So probably what the future will hold is a hybrid of virtual as well as a physical thing. Yeah. So um, um, in IFI, yes, I also liked hugging Maniji, uh, you were there. <laughs> it, it makes a lot of difference to be physically present. But uh, same time, we need to be, uh, you know, probably this would reach out to a wider segment of population and you know, like, of our fraternity and uh, maybe this would help us in the long run. Well, some of these problems that we are finding eventually technology will be the solution 20 years from now someone's going to have a customizable robot which becomes the avatar or something <laughs> <laughs> uh, james cameron will Victor, be very happy to hear that's that's along with the, along with the <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> yeah. almost every technology you've been talking about is here already i've seen yeah, it. I'm, just, I'm just talking about expanding it right so you've got the sofia robot Far more expanded than you can even imagine right now yeah and that your, your point about a vr i'm seeing some of the questions coming in vr set replacing theater experience who knows it could happen i just want to talk about international cooperation a little bit i'm seeing questions coming in on that as well uh, including how india so i i i'll just turn to that mark let me get you in the lessons from what we are seeing in covid maybe you can help us uh, from the people in the indian film industry what are the sort of lessons you're picking up happening globally and what lessons are, are the, uh, do you think will be eventually rolled out all across the world? Both in how you're dealing with the pandemic and what the future will be. Well, I think my view on uh, the post-COVID shooting world is uh, already in the UK, there are uh, smaller productions happening. Uh, a few of my friends have already shot music videos with COVID rules in place. And uh, although, you know, there is no doubt it is more work intensive, it is manageable to date. And uh, I just think that with the help of technology, um, as we've indicated, there will be uh, productions going on. I think that a lot of people will have, you know, on entry to sets, will have temperature scanners uh, alongside uh, COVID testing if the temperatures are raised. And I think this will become normal practice. And I also think that for the bigger productions, there might be that phase of 
going into a single location for a week in advance of the production so that you know they can not indeed have any COVID um, cases before the production starts. So the technology is absolutely the key. I also think in the very short term, which I think is a shame for the industry, is that a lot more production will be local uh, because I think that you know, whereas a lot more uh, stories were told internationally previously, I think in the, in the short term, I think stories will be told on a local basis, you know, over the next six to nine months. Hopefully, um, with new technologies coming in, that will start to get back to normal, I think, towards spring next year. All right. That's a, so a couple of points from that, which I want to throw to everybody, actually, on the panel. We've been discussing a lot specifically about how consumers are going to get the content in, in the post-COVID world. And that, of course, is, a, is an important question. And, you know, time will tell, I guess, and technology will tell. Kabir, if I could just come to you and everyone else on... Can I, um, can I, Vikram, I'm sorry. Can no, I just ahead, answer a question? Yeah, which carry on. Sorry. Mark has said. Mark, I'm currently in prep for a film to be shot in the UK with working title. Yeah. And here's what I found. It's not a big film, but this, the insurance cost that has been added because of COVID is $2 million. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, we have to extend our shoot days by about 10 days, simply because the hours that we can shoot are limited. Now, yeah. you know, UK is opening up. If there isn't a second surge, maybe yeah. we'll be more confident. But currently, and I got the budget, there was $2 million extra for COVID insurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, large productions like, like mine are, are going to be seriously affected. How do I do you know, street, street chases and things. So we're having to work around all that. Now, just, just want to say this, I'm not against uh, theatrical. I was actually on uh, a jury member on the Khan Film Festival. I hate the fact that I can't get drunk. <laughs> like, <laughs> the amount of that, that champagne that flows the Khan Film Festival, it's <laughs> hard work, but you do get to see each other's films. You know, you do get to hug each other, filmmaker. You do. I'm just saying that already, you know, what has been mentioned here is that the theatrical the, the, came to you and said, we'll make smaller theaters, right? We used to make films for huge screens, right? And already the, the theaters are talking about smaller and smaller theaters so that they don't have to, you know, if 3% of the audiences in India are watching theaters, watching films in theaters, it's not a huge number of our percentage of our audience, number one. But the other, the, so what we can do is just make small, you know, 40 seaters, 30 seaters with those wide things so that we can keep a little bit of social distancing and theater, theaters will be limited to that. So it's not like the theater is going to go away, but they'll feel like what our private theaters are like now, you know, it's going to feel a bit like that. Right. So, so, I mean, I think that's a, that those are really interesting takes on that question. Bertrand Luna and others have been asking that question about insurance. I'm glad Shekhar has already taken it. Kabir, on filming, because obviously a lot of people must be concerned, and I'm going to come to the government also to talk about that. There must be a lot of people concerned. A very large number of people do drive livelihood and employment from the film industry, daily wagers, others who are coming, extras who come to the set. It's, an, it's a huge industry uh, at the end of the day. So how is shooting going to change is a, a very important question. How is shooting going to change during... The lockdown in the next one or two months and are there going to be other changes that will come uh, we were just hearing for example the point being made about <laughs> maybe international big productions where you're flying around all over the world maybe that doesn't happen to that same extent but do you see the shooting patterns being changed forever as a result of this so I definitely know. sorry was that aimed sorry that was aimed yeah, i'll just get covered in then i'm going to get everyone else to be in on that as well yeah and it's also so just to put it quickly I, I, again, um, I think things will definitely change in the next, uh, the way we shoot in the next 9, 10, 11 months, up to uh, a year and a half. Um, yes, there will be some pressures to reduce the number of people, um, not travel much, uh, you know, and, and, and follow all the procedures that have been put down. But I think once the fear goes away, once either a medicine comes in, a treatment comes in, or a vaccine comes in, I pretty much see it going back to what it was. Uh, you know, cutting down the number of crew in India, I'm not sure whether that's a good idea because there's, a, there's thousands of people whose livelihood depends on, uh, you know, being on set. Uh, you know, you order a big light, there will be three light boys with that light. In the West, that does not happen. In the West, they just put that truck into the, that light into the truck. You take it out and you handle it. But in India, a big light will come with three boys. Every lens will come with one boy. 
uh, I don't know. Is the answer to just remove all of them and then you know remove their source of livelihood? Livelihood. I don't think the simple uh, answer to that. Um, so I my my gut feel is that yes, it will definitely change out of uh, a necessity. I mean, there is there are certain restrictions in the way, way you have to shoot while COVID is still around. But I think once COVID or uh, let me see the fear of COVID goes away, I pretty much see it going back to normal here in India. Right, Anand, do you agree with that? And then I'm going to throw that to the two. This yeah, I, I, I somewhere agree with uh, Kavir on this. That definitely, we will have we have to go through a certain new norms and new way of uh, making films right now. But once the, once we are out of it, see, the, the COVID problem is not just a filmmaker's problem. No, it's a it's a global problem. Everybody is facing it. So there will be new norms in the process. We'll keep on fighting, and we will keep on uh, working out things getting a smaller crew as small as possible that's that all will happen but finally what finally it is uh for a filmmaker it is very and and, and as, as kabir said no now for a film like say what kabir made 83 you ask the audience only at this point and and, and in these times when we are going through this covid whether they will like after say four months five months if the medicine is there where will they will like to watch this film 83 in theaters or OTT you will get your answer and I'm very sure as an audience I'm saying I would love to watch 83 in theater not on OTT so th that thing you know the process is there for six months yeah eight months ten months we will go through a, a, a you know um, a tight spot how to go ahead with it how to make films but once out of it I'm very sure that th there is a clear demarcation that th these are these are the films we are going to watch in theater and we have theater lovers, cinema loving people here. Yeah. So that is bound to happen. This is one year what we have to go through till we get a medicine or a vaccine. So because you know, just one very I, interesting I, 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 point, I was right. reading this, sorry, I was just reading this article about Korea. Korea has uh, one of the highest percentage of its uh, population going to theaters. Uh, it also has the highest broadband uh, speeds. So there must be something that's bringing them to the theaters, despite the fact that they already probably have the technology, they have the broadband speeds, deliver what has to be delivered to their homes. So that makes me believe that there's something very, uh, uh, there's a very strong connection about watching a film with your community. Yeah, except in Kabir, I was just about to say that, can I be a, can I have a slightly dissenting voice on the waiting for 83 for the theaters? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm, I, I've been waiting for it and I can't wait to go and see it in the theater. But seeing as we've had no sport in India for the last three months, if you were to release it even on OTT or something else, I know it's tough to do a thing like that, but you a lot of people would be wanting to watch it now and then we'll go and watch it in the theater as well. So that's just a, you know, no one's seen cricket in such a long time. So if you are waiting, it's really, 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 really waiting for that film in particular, I think. No, and uh, just uh, just an aside as a personal experience, I do watch films on on Netflix, Amazon, etc., OTT platform. But at least four times a month, we go to the theater as a middle class family. We go and see the movies also. So that is the kind of uh, you know uh, response to what Korea is doing. It's probably that you know you get to watch a lot more if you are uh, uh, with with the theaters and the broadband that is a uh, speed that is there. Mr. Tiwari, if I could just get you in on some of the issues around production, and you referred to them a little bit earlier also. Kabir says that he, he thinks that very soon, either when the vaccine comes or it, even if the medication comes, right? We're already hearing some drugs that will reduce critical cases, fatality rate is not that high. There's a certain rate below which once deaths start to fall or when cases start to reach, the fear goes away and then production can restart. What do you think that should the industry start thinking about restarting in a in a safer, fewer people, socially distant, obviously, but with fewer people? Is that the right way to go or just wait for a few months and go big bang? Uh, um, uh, making film, uh, after all, is a uh, kind of a commercial decision and uh, uh, there are certain things which have to be done at, at a, uh, some time. So my answer to your question would be that uh, perhaps uh, taking the as much precautions as possible 
And as Mr. Kapoor was saying, another filmmaker also told us about uh, the insurance cost. So keeping that in mind, uh, I think uh, the filmmakers can go ahead and start uh, uh, creating the content. I mean, cannot wait beyond the point. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have to be optimistic that uh, vaccine will be there and uh, we'll certainly reach a plateau. I think things can't get worse than that. Uh, is the assumption we like to make, and uh, I think they should things should start getting back to normal, uh, depending upon everybody's uh, take on the precautions and uh, risks. Right, Mark, can I get you in on that? Like again, some of the because there are certain countries where now the peak is some distance behind them, and they're already looking at life as a post-COVID sort of a life. So. What and and some countries never had COVID. You know, New Zealand had nothing really in, in line. And so they're fully open for production. And I know there's some friends working on a Netflix series down there and there are other productions. I think that Greece has reopened recently uh, for production in Europe and obviously a few other countries. Iceland for quite a while and, and, uh, and Norway recently as well. So most European countries now are starting to reopen uh, for production. And I do understand the issues of insurance because I have a film going in September and at the moment it's not going because of insurance. Um, so we are in this difficult time period to see whether a second wave is going to happen or whether, you know, it's still a big unknown whether how many people have had this disease and not known they've had this disease because there's lots of people who will have had it and uh, those those tests are coming through in the UK now, but only just now. So we have access to tests to see whether we've got it, but we're only now getting access to antibody tests to see whether we've had it. And I think that will be the big question for a lot of productions to see if people like myself, you know, who has been was working in London right at the peak in March, I think probably I've got it, but I just luckily didn't get it very bad. And I think there's quite a few of those people. So all of those questions will start to be answered over the coming three to six months. And I think that will obviously bring insurance down considerably if people start to understand the numbers who've had it and who've not had it. And, uh, and obviously at an R rate, keeping it under one is what the government here and all governments around the world are trying to do. But it's natural R rate is, is not one of the most deadly diseases and it's not one of the most you know it is a terrible terrible disease do not underestimate it but you know it's a r rate naturally of about three they reckon so i think it should be able to be controlled on productions with face masks with temperature checks with all of the things that the government here and i'm sure in india are putting in place and so i do think it's manageable and i think insurance are just as all insurance companies do being over cautious at the moment i think that the insurance policies hopefully will start to come back to reality in the next three to six months right vikram, one, vikram uh, just one one thing which we are missing here somewhere i'm not saying we're missing i think kabir and anand briefly mentioned it we should also look at the kind of content which will be created now i think twitter recently did a poll about whether people want to see apocalyptic films and everybody just on mass gave it a thumbs down so i think wherein uh, the intimacy of space that we are talking about as far as exhibition and distribution of cinema is concerned we should also be looking at what kind of content and what kind of storytelling is going to play out and that itself so when i say leaner units and that's what i want to reach out to kabir to say if i'm making an intimate story i probably do not want or do not need you know those hundred people on the set anymore for example i was working on a web series right now which is set in the british colonial era i'm suddenly taking a step back from it because i may not be able to make it for some time because i need to go to an outdoor i need those hundred people on the set and i'm already thinking what is in the middle of all this as a producer i make a story which is on relationships maybe on something which is a storytelling narrative of what happened during covid to people while they were in lockdown so i think the the narrative and the reassessment of the narrative which will be playing out for content creation is very much a part of you know how we'll be seeing stories uh, you know being exhibited whether on ott or in the theaters uh, at the end of the day you need an audience and that audience is very much a part of the narrative okay 
Um, I think Shekhar just dropped out. Somebody needs to share Shekhar back in. We know that that's one of the things you've got to do in the virtual world. Uh, so we'll allow him back in. Karanji, just on the on this, on a couple of the points that were that were being 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 made right now. Um, what are the sort of do you think the government needs to come out with some guidelines? Like, for example, what should be the checks be on a set? Is is temperature scanning enough? There's a strong view uh, of people who are saying that it's actually not particularly helpful if 40, 50 percent of people are asymptomatic. Don't do temperature scanning. Have other ways. Is the solution to have create a bubble? So people working in a particular film should all go off into a location which is somewhat safe. Spend weeks or seven days in quarantine in hotel rooms before they start interacting with each other, and after that they are fine. So maybe some of these are areas where maybe the government will come up with with, with guidelines or. See, uh, the SOPs that we have tried to formulate in consultation, we had some, uh, with some Vicky, we had some, we had some SOPs which they had prepared. The Guild had also given us some SOPs. So we have addressed this issue of, uh, you know, the, uh, let there not be, you also, in India, you also have an audience that comes to see the shooting. So to the extent possible, let us not have the audience that is there to come uh, to the thing. To the extent possible, restrict the travel commute from the location to the place of residence. Uh, the other issue is on food. How do you, um, you know, because um, maybe get food from home because otherwise you have a congregation of people. And then how uh, the uh, SOP for maintenance of social uh, distancing for uh, makeup artists, etc. cetera. So um, like dentists and maybe eye doctors, makeup artists, uh, the makeup persons will probably have to kind of wear their masks or whatever because it's going to involve very close contact. So those are the kind of issues which uh, uh, the government, uh, what we are, we, we can't prescribe. We can only give guidelines. So to follow it to the extent possible, but and to um, uh, quarantining depending on the state location, if the state so warrants because each state is on a different level of COVID uh, crisis. So if the state says that the quarantining is necessary, like I know for sure that Tamil Nadu says anybody coming from any other state into the state needs to go into quarantine. Other states are also having, some states do not have the quarantine facility if you're asymptomatic. So we, um, if you're planning on shooting right now, then probably these, uh, 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 in addition to the general guidelines that we are giving, the spe state specific guidelines will also have to be followed because we can't have the spread happening, you know, the way it is spreading. So on that, uh, I expect that by end of this week, at least the government guidelines should uh, be in place, if not early next week. And that would be uh, that would be common to all uh, states. But then state-specific guidelines have also been issued. Maharashtra has come out with it. Uttarakhand has come out with it. Andhra Pradesh has come out with it. Tamil Nadu has come out with it. So you have state-specific requirements also that will probably need to be kept in mind when we uh, do this. So, yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kumari, you want to add anything to that before I come back to the panelists? On guidelines, on how you think the business should operate, um, anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think, I think Kalyani ji has uh, uh, given a full account of that and uh, we have to take all the factors into account at the same time, uh, make things happen. And, uh, and anything to make happen, I think there has to be a consensus of all the stakeholders. So in that sense, we have moved far ahead and hopefully we'll be able to release it. And I pray that it will satisfy the concerns of everybody. Um, All right, that's great. That's Vikram, great. can I come in? I've been yeah. out. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Shekhar, I can hear you. In fact, yeah, I, was... I went out. My, you know, that's the idea of living in, in, in the mountains. The power went off. <laughs> And the power has to come back and then the Wi-Fi has to come back. Then I have to come in. Then I have to call somebody desperately. Guys, I'm trying to get in. Get me in. Uh, yeah, really it's interesting, Vikram. There's something we're missing. Something that I've been dealing with my time at MIT. What we found is that the pace of change is accelerating. Right. Okay. Mm. And, you know, uh, you, know we, you, you know that, Kabir and Anand, that there's a person. Let me just say some one a guy is a star or a girl is a star, suddenly next film, she's not. She's not. Something changed. We didn't see that. Stars used to last at least 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. We are so, we have so much uh, external stimuli coming at us. The external stimuli that is coming out at us is right now is technology. 
And I know that the pace of change of technology, they're trying to get into our minds like that, like that for us to use it. And as that pace of change keeps going, let's say theaters don't come back for a year. By that time, our audiences have got used to 10 other technologies, sitting at home, getting excited, getting wonderfully, and I can tell you right now, I mean, I have seen game playing with, what, half a million people on the same game at the same time? And they're talking to each other. I'm sitting here and there's somebody, I said, who are you talking to? No, no, don't disturb me. I've got one other guy, I've got a game. I'm playing against somebody in China. You know, it just goes on and on. And this kind of technology will suddenly put you, as I kept saying, if I'm, or you're making Mahabharat, what could be better than actually walking into Kurukshetra war? I'm in the middle of the war. Oh, something can give me that, right? And then 300 of my friends are in the middle of the war. One of them becomes Christian. One of them becomes Arjun with certain guidelines. What am I going to do? What am I, how do I get them back to the theaters? I absolutely agree. I'm a theatrical filmmaker. I was an accountant. I gave up because I loved big screen cinema. I have to be <coughs> Because before I'm a theater, I'm a filmmaker, Anand and Kabir, both of you realize we're storytellers, right? We need to tell stories. I don't care. If you take away storytelling from me, I'll die. But to, for me to say, theater nahi to main nahi bataunga. if I learn no theaters, I'm not going to tell stories. I mean, Paris, Paris is opening the theaters this week, right? Let's see what happens. Right? Uh, so I just say that the reason I want to keep going with technology is I know it changes. Yeah. And I know that our audiences, as they grow one year older, will be adapting to new technologies. I have to be ready for that. I have to be ready. How do you tell my story in this new technology? I think that that's, a, that's a pretty interesting way to end it at time. By the way, personally, I do tend to agree with you, Shekhar. The pace of change is happening so fast. I mean, as I'm saying, I'm a, I'm a believer in what you're saying. The reason I gave up TV news is I said, no one's going to watch TV news anymore, where you're just hearing, getting and screaming, coming at you at a screen. Give people personalized news, coming to them on their things in a different manner. Once you show somebody something different, they may not come back. And as technology evolves, for a certain section of people, I'm sure what you're saying is 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 going to well happen. Just want to get a final thought from everybody. I think we're nearly out of time, so wait one line or two lines quickly. And I just wanted to get you in also one of the points about shooting and how that is going to change. Um, is there a possibility that increasingly production and shooting will be done in little bubbles, where as opposed to where you just say that look, um, I'm going to get a, get a group of people together instead of checking them. Let's take them to a or let's just take them all to, I don't know, New Zealand or take them to any part of India which doesn't have too many cases and we keep them in a particular area and let's just shoot the film out there. Everyone does seven days quarantine, then we start shooting. Is that the way to go forward? That and any other thoughts, closing comments from everyone now, starting with you, Anand. So for me, uh, Vikram, if you ask me, uh, uh, as, 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 as a filmmaker, I have no problem with the OTT, you know, if I make a film for OTT, I have no issues. Say for next one year, I feel that there's a certain kind of story which requires a bigger screen uh, experience. I will not go for it. I'll make certain films which will be fine for OTT. I really don't mind dealing with OTT for next one, one and a half year. But I'll choose my subject. I'll decide on that and then go for it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll go and make a film which I know Will, will be loved, as, as Shekhar has said, that we are all about stories yeah. and how we choose our stories, you know, for, and, and it's, it's a different platform. Like cinema always got a threat from VHS when it came in the market. People said, cinema pe asar padega iska. VHS was threat. Private channels, when, when uh, Z, Sony, Star, they came and said, films pe asar padega, because people are going to watch it on. Then, then OTT came. In last four years, we have been facing this threat that People will shift to OTT, people will shift to OTT, and cinema is fighting hard for it. Because there are a kind of stories, and I'm not talking about the canvas, I'm talking about the feel of okay. an emotion. The grandeur is of an emotion, it's not about the lens, it's, it's, sure. it's about that emotion. So, in the next one year, yes, uh, we have to be very smart enough to choose our stories and understand that there will be a limited audience in theatres, so we have to deal with it. Okay. Tomorrow, if I have I've decided that I make this film straight OTT ke liye banata hu, and I know that this story is going to be played in which place. But I can't do that. It's a it's a different platform. Cinema okay. is a different platform. It's it has got its own storytelling. 
you can't say that uh, as shegas has said that um, i i really understand that uh, amavarat and and 300 characters and me being part of it it's a different kind of storytelling it will also flourish in times it will this this technology will will us as a filmmaker will give a, a different path but this cinema it is there to stay and we will understand how to fight as a cinema warrior we will fight it out and see ki what kind of budgeting how to place whether it is just a 30% audience moving in 50% audience moving in like kabir next when you make a film you know if it is releasing in say one and a half years you know what you are going for and you if, if you know that you will only get your 50% audience you know the budgeting of it. you know how will you deal with it you know but agar usko bada screen chahiye to bada screen milna chahiye it is not that we will not get that thing ki hum um, log back out kar jate we will understand the budget and go for it we, we will deal right. with ott stories for ott and uh, stories for cinema and it is limited audience when it's limited audience all right i think we are out of time i think just enough line for one kabhi you want to you were trying to say something think, yeah i think just uh, very briefly saying i i think from this entire discussion what's important is i think all kinds of storytelling and all kinds of platforms to view those stories are going to coexist as vani said it's not a competition uh, i think ultimately it is storytelling we are storytellers shaker put it correctly and we want people to watch our films our, our stories going out and whichever platform can give us the maximum number of people and the greatest experience i think all of them will uh, coexist uh, at at a personal level you know yes i love theaters but my most ambitious and my visually biggest uh, uh, production was the forgotten army for a ott platform um so i think it's it's about coexisting in terms of all kinds of storytelling and all kinds of platforms all right i think we are bani you want to quickly say one get one line in before yeah I... just just absolutely one line nietzsche very famously said what doesn't kill us makes us stronger we'll emerge stronger out of this this is a industry which is we are a biradri we've collaborated so many years and we are katha watchers we will die he's right checker is right we'll die if we'll not tell stories so this will be we will emerge stronger and i'm sure we will recalibrate and i think we already are we are talking about it virtually at the kan film festival i think that itself is a new normal right so i think we will wrap it now mr tiwari one last quick line from you to wrap up this session i can sense that uh, there is an optimism around and uh, while we are a little bit of a skeptical of the present situation we are still hopeful that things would work out well in the end and uh, whether without with or without covid there are going to be certain changes in the way the uh, cinema is being made and show and that's great vikram can i say something quick yes sir theater on <coughs> unfortunately you're sitting with two filmmakers here who are on the cutting edge of cinema i wish the other filmmakers were here that i could scream and shout at them these guys are good filmmakers <laughs> The issue right now is just to tell you, theater, theatrical releases, theater, theaters have become lazy. Star lo, itna budget lo, itni publicity karo, itna itna first week mein kamalo. Ho gaya. That's our theatrical. That's kebab. That's dying. That's absolutely going to die. The very fact that now Kabir has to budget ki, yar, I'm only going to get 20% of the audiences that I used to, so I have to budget my film. That first week is gone. That idea of theatrical is dead. That's the theater that's gone, and thank God for that. Okay. You can see that we can continue this discussion going for a long time. That's one of the one of the advantages of being able to do cons virtually. A, we can all attend and we can go on having this discussion. But I guess we have to call a call a wrap to it at some point. So thank you all so much for joining. This was really great. And please do keep the stories coming in whichever format we see them. We do look forward to the stories. And perhaps more than ever, more than ever before, we need to be told good stories. We need to be. to get that entertainment uh, as well so thank you all so much for joining thank you thank you thank you, thank you. keep up bye